there are a lot of different ways to rotate an object in Unity, which can sometimes make it tricky to choose the right method to get the kind of rotation that you want. However, while rotating objects in Unity can sometimes be difficult to visualize, breaking down what it is you want to do into separate steps and keeping the process as simple as you can, can make it much easier to do. And in most cases, there'll be a built-in function that can help you. In this video, you'll learn some of the basic methods of rotating an object in Unity, as well as when you might use them, so that you can keep rotation in your game simple and easy to work with. So how do you rotate an object in Unity? The first thing you should probably know about rotating an object in Unity is that what you see in the inspector isn't necessarily what's happening behind the scenes. In the inspector, you'll see the rotation value in Euler angles, which is a three-dimensional rotation represented as a vector three value that will rotate an object around the z-axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis in that order. These are the human readable rotation values that will allow you to work with rotation in the editor using a user-friendly system. So if you want to adjust the orientation of an object in the game, changing its Euler angles makes that easy to do. However, behind the scenes, the actual rotation of the object is stored and calculated as a quaternion, which is a different type of rotation value. This means that in order to set the rotation of an object in code, you'll need to set the Euler angles property, not the rotation, which accepts a vector three value and converts it to a quaternion while getting the Euler angles value allows you to read an object's quaternion rotation as a vector three. But why go to all the trouble? If they're easier, why not just use Euler angles for everything? While Euler angles are easy to read and easy to work with, they have a couple of problems. For example, because each axis is determined in order, it's possible to align two axes of rotation in parallel, resulting in the loss of a degree of freedom. This is referred to as gimbal lock, and in Unity, it can be recreated by turning an object 90 degrees around its x-axis, at which point changing the y or z rotation values will rotate the object in the same way, limiting its movement. Eulers can also cause problems when trying to interpolate between different rotations, where incrementing an Euler angle to a new position can cause the object to rotate towards it indirectly. Quaternions, on the other hand, are an expression of rotation based on a four-dimensional number system, which avoids the common problems associated with Euler angles. The drawback is that they can be complicated to work with. Generally, you're not expected to enter quaternion data manually, like you might do with a vector three value. Instead, it's possible to work with existing quaternions, such as the rotation value of an object, or the result of a function that returns a quaternion value, such as the look rotation function, which is used to turn a direction into a rotation. Then, if you need to enter rotation data manually, you can simply use a user-friendly Euler angle to do it, by converting it to a quaternion using the Euler angles property, or by using a quaternion function that accepts an Euler angle input, as most of them do. All of which is fine. What you typically don't want to do is treat a quaternion as if it's an Euler. For example, it's possible to set an object's rotation using an Euler angle to describe the orientation that you want. But, when you read the same rotation back, the values you get might be different to the ones you assign. This happens because it's possible to represent the same rotation using different Euler angles. For example, an angle of minus one degrees when passed in can be returned as an angle of 359 degrees when read back. As a result, you generally shouldn't try to increment an object's rotation directly using the Euler angles property. Instead, if you do want to increment a rotation using Euler angles, it's usually better to do it by changing a local value, which you can then convert into a quaternion. However, a lot of the time, it's generally a good idea to use Unity's built-in rotation functions if you can, as doing so helps to avoid many of the problems you could run into with Euler angles, while still allowing you to use them as a simple way of describing rotation values. Such as when using the rotate function, for example. The rotate function allows you to rotate an object a relative amount around a particular axis. It works by either passing in a vector three value, where each float of the vector three represents how many degrees the object will rotate around that axis, or by specifying an angle of rotation and an axis around which to rotate. So for example, if you wanted to turn an object by 90 degrees, you can simply pass in 90 degrees around the object's up axis, and the object will be rotated a quarter turn from its current position or you can enter the rotation value as Euler angles. For example, to spin an object at a speed of 10 degrees per second, 
simply pass 10 degrees into the y axis value, scaled by delta time, leaving the x and z axes at zero. By default, the axis of rotation is local, meaning that the orientation of the rotation you add is relative to the existing orientation of the object. Alternatively, you can rotate the object in world space, where the rotation axis is relative to the orientation of the world instead. Rotate can be extremely useful for changing the relative rotation of an object to turn it 90 degrees or to spin it at a set speed over time. However, while rotate can be great for moving an object around its own point of origin, sometimes you may want to rotate an object around something else. There are a number of reasons why you might want to rotate an object around a point in Unity. For example, let's say that you want to open a door. Normally, the pivot point of a door's model might be correctly placed at its hinge. However, if it's not, then the door will rotate around its center when it opens, which, if you're familiar with doors, you'll know is not how they normally work. Most of them, at least. Which means that you're probably going to want to change the pivot point so that the door opens correctly. So how can you? One of the simplest methods for changing the pivot point of an object is to simply offset its position with a parent object. This works by placing your original object in the position you want it to be, then create a second empty game object that's separate to the original and place it at the pivot point. Then drag the original object to the pivot, making it a child object. Then when you rotate the pivot, the object will rotate in response. Using hierarchical relationships like this can be one of the easiest ways to manage rotation. And when you find yourself trying to work out how to rotate an object in a particular way, it's often worth considering if simply nesting one object inside of another will get you the kind of movement you want. However, it's also possible to rotate around another point without making the object a child of another by using the rotate around function. Rotate around works in a similar way to the child method, except that it doesn't involve a parent object. It works by passing in a position, such as a point in the world or position of another object, that you want to rotate around, an axis around which the rotation will be applied, and a float value for the angle of rotation. The function will then adjust the position and the rotation of the object around that point, turning and moving it around the target. If the distance between the target and the object increases, the rotating object will take a wider trajectory, or if it decreases, it'll take a smaller one. This method can be used to build a basic orbital camera, where the rotate around function moves a camera object around a player using the world up and local right axes, passing in the mouse's movement values as a rotation angle and a local radius value to determine how far away the camera should be. And so long as the camera starts in the correct position, looking towards the player, it will continue to do so while it's moved around its target. But what if you want to rotate an object around another object without turning it as you do? For example, what if you want one object to rotate around another object in an orbit, but without looking towards the object it's moving around? To do that, it's possible to calculate a rotated position around another point by rotating a vector. A vector is simply a definition of direction and length. For example, a forward vector, which is a unit vector with a length of 1, multiplied by a distance value of 5, describes an offset of 5 units forwards. So adding that vector to an origin position results in a final position that's five units in front of the object. However, it's also possible to rotate that vector, turning the offset so that it moves in a different direction. It works by multiplying a quaternion rotation, which is the angle of rotation that you want to apply to the vector, by the vector that you want to rotate. Multiplication order matters with quaternions, and as a result, for this to work, the quaternion must be on the left-hand side. The result is a rotated offset which, when added to the origin, describes a new position, 5 units from the starting point, but at a 30 degree angle. This method can be useful if you want to rotate an object around another using position only, as unlike when using rotate around, because you're simply specifying a position and then moving an object to it, the object won't be turned as it's rotated. Which can be useful if you want to create an orbiting object where the object's rotation is independent of the object it's moving around, and doesn't rotate towards it. However, there may also be times when all you want to do is rotate one object towards another object, or a point in the world. So how can you do that? There are a few different ways to rotate an object towards another in Unity. The easiest method is using the look at function, which will instantly turn an object so that its forward axis faces a target. For example, calling the lookat function on a camera in late updates will cause it to follow an object around. 
Or, if you want to turn an object towards another gradually, rotate towards will move a rotation value towards a target, in the same way that move towards can be used to move a vector 3 towards a new value over time, at a set maximum speed. To use it, you'll need to calculate the rotation you want to target as a quaternion value. To find a rotation that points at another position in the world, you're going to need to calculate the direction towards the object you want to face. The look rotation function can then be used to turn the direction into a quaternion rotation, which will act as the target rotation in the rotate towards function. Setting the object's rotation value to the result of the function will rotate it towards the target position, limited by the max degree delta, which is how fast in degrees you want the object to be able to rotate. However, while rotate towards can be used to turn an object towards another gradually, it's limited by the speed of the turn, which is linear throughout. Meaning that if you use rotate towards to turn a camera towards another object, for example, the object could outrun the view of the camera, which can only turn at a set speed. So how can you ease the rotation of an object so that it turns smoothly, but in a way that's based on movement time, not speed? Typically, when you want to ease between two values, you might use lerp, which is linear interpolation, or slurp, which is spherical interpolation, to gradually change a value towards a target over time. This works because interpolation allows you to specify a start and end rotation and then blend between them using a time value, t. For example, you can use slurp to rotate between two known points using a float value as an input. The main difference between slurp and lerp is that slurp produces a slightly more accurate path of rotation. However, generally speaking, both lerp and slurp are not meant as dynamic easing functions. Their linear movements carry out over a known amount of time, changing one value to another. Using them in technically the wrong way allows for a kind of dynamic easing, where the movement gradually slows as it arrives towards its target. However, this isn't how lerp is supposed to be used. Instead, dynamic easing is typically done with smooth damp, which moves the value towards a target over an approximate amount of time, adjusting the velocity of change in relation to the value's proximity to its start point and its target, which may be different from when the movement started. This makes it ideal for smoothly moving an object towards a moving target, where the speed of the object will be slowed at the beginning and end of its travel. However, there is no smooth damp function for rotation, and you'll get unusual results if you try to use the smooth damp function with vector 3 Euler angles. So what can you do? One way around this is to use smooth damp angle, which is a mathematical function that can be used to ease a single float value, but while taking degrees of rotation into account. It works by calculating a target rotation using the look rotation function and converting it to Euler angles. Then, each individual value of the vector 3 is smoothed towards the target and passed back as a converted quaternion. Smooth damp requires a local velocity value so that it can calculate the value's rate of change between frames, referenced using the ref keyword. While the smooth time value dictates roughly how long the movement should take, assuming that the target doesn't change before it gets there. This method works to create a smooth easing function that, despite working directly with converted Euler angles, isn't affected by angle changes across full degrees of rotation meaning that the camera won't try to take the long way round towards an object. And while it's not perfect, since the interpolation of Euler's takes a less direct path than quaternions do, this is generally less noticeable when performing simple rotations around two axes, such as turning a camera to point at a target, for example. However, it's also possible to use a similar approach with quaternion rotations, allowing you to essentially build a native quaternion smooth damp function, for an example of how to do this, see the link in the video description to Max Kaufman's example, which is pictured here. So far, these examples typically all involve applying precise, controlled rotational movement to an object. But what if that's not what you want? What if you want to spin an object around using physics instead? You can apply rotational force to a rigid body using the add torque method, which takes a vector 3 value to specify how much force to apply around each axis. Add torque can be useful for spinning an object with momentum, using the mouse for example, where the horizontal and vertical mouse movements can be applied to the rigid body as torque when the mouse button is held down. In this example, because this method applies a continuous application of force, it should be applied in fixed update, while the input checks are carried out in update. 
A boolean connects the two, applying force when the mouse button is held down, while increasing the object's angular drag allows it to naturally slow after the force is applied. This method of applying rotational torque also works in 2D. However, because two-dimensional objects can only be rotated around a single axis, you'll only need to enter a single float value, which is the amount of torque that you want to apply. Or, if you want to rotate a 2D object directly, without using physics, it's possible to rotate it using the same rotation functions as a 3D object. The only difference is that when rotating a flat sprite, you'll need to be mindful of the rotation axis you're using to avoid hiding the object by turning it sideways to the camera. Now I want to hear from you. How are you rotating objects in your game? Have you found it easy or difficult to get the results that you want? And what have you learned about rotating objects in Unity that others will find useful? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it helpful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.